atonement, at one moment, reuniting us back to God so that we could, because sin separated us from God, once again be at one with God. I hope you got that because I don't know if I could ever say that again that way. Here's what it meant and here's what it is. It was to be celebrated on one day. And on that one day, the high priest would go into the most holy, the holy of holies, where the Shekinah glory of God was. And he would make atonement for Israel's sins. This is where Israel would be at one again with God now that the sins had been dealt with and atonement had been made for them. So too, our high priest, Jesus Christ, will return with us on that day, the second coming, after the seven-year tribulation, when all of Israel will be saved. Let me say it this way. At the rapture of the church, Jesus Christ comes for us. At the second coming, Jesus comes with us, ten thousands by his side. Did you ever wonder who that was that was coming with him by his side? It's you! (laughs) It's me! It's us! It's those of us who are born again of the Spirit of God. Rapture ready. That's who comes with him. So at the rapture, he comes for us. At the second coming, he comes with us. See, we're going to be celebrating, even consummating our marriage to the Lamb. Understand the distinction again here. Israel is the wife of God. The church is the bride of Christ. How cool is this? We're going to be raptured up, and as, as it was the custom in Jewish bridal uh, customs, is the, uh, the groom would catch the bride, snatch her away in the middle of the, of the night as a thief in the night, and take her to his bridal chamber that he had went to prepare a place, usually a room addition, next to his father's house. And they would celebrate and consummate their marriage for seven days. What happens after seven days? Uh, Again, a picture of the seven years of tribulation. Again, we're going to be celebrating while the world is tribulating for seven years, consummating our marriage to the Lamb. Now, after the seven years of celebrating our marriage to the Lamb, you know what happens? Big potluck. I mean huge potluck. (laughs) It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. I can't wait. Good grinds. By the way, (laughs) for those of you who don't know, there will be food in heaven, to which I say, Lord, come quickly. (laughs) It's fat-free. It's calorie-free. There's no high cholesterol, no high blood pressure, no nothing. Okay. I'm glad I just needed to get that off my chest. So here's this seven-year tribulation on earth and seven years celebration. And at the end of the seven year tribulation, at the end of our seven year celebration with our bridegroom in the bridal chamber, we come back. And that's what they did in Jewish bridal customs. The bride and the groom would come out after seven days. They would come back out to the wedding uh, party. So too, after the seven years, we're going to come back to earth with the Lord by his side, as his bride, and then all of Israel will be saved. That's what Romans, the Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Rome said. The whole house of Israel will be saved on the day of atonement. It'll be the final day of atonement for all of Israel. Listen, God is not through with the Jew. And by the way, you don't want him to be through with the Jew. Why do I say that? Because he has a covenant with the Jew, and he has a covenant with me and you. If he's going to break a covenant with the Jew, then how secure are me and you with the covenant that he has with me and you? Again, I hope you got that. Don't know that I can say it that way again. He has a covenant with the Jews. It's the Old Covenant. It's the Old Testament. So too does he have a covenant with me and you. It's the new covenant. It's the New Testament, the new covenant in Christ. I don't want him being through with the Jew. He's got a plan. By the way, that's an Arab telling you that, okay? Listen, he is not through with the Jew. He has a plan for Israel. And on that great and final day when he returns and us with him by his side as his bride, it is the final day of atonement which this feast pointed to. 
when all of Israel is saved. It's really interesting, as one said, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, represents the affliction and salvation of Israel during the seven-year tribulation, and the Day of the Lord, or second coming after the tribulation, it's the Day of Atonement for Israel, who look upon him whom they have pierced, repent of their sins, and receive Jesus as their Messiah, Zechariah 12.10. And then again, the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6 and 25 through 36, he talks about how it is that Israel, at the end of the seven-year tribulation, will come to a saving knowledge of their true Messiah, but not without first embracing the false Christ, the false Messiah. They're going to realize that halfway through the seven-year tribulation. The last feast is the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Booths. Uh, This is a picture of and points to the millennium and heaven, the new heavens and the new earth. It was to be celebrated for seven days and then one day. And the Feast of Tabernacles commemorated God's provision in the wilderness uh, while bringing them into the promised land. Now, what this means to us as the church is that it points to us being brought out of the world or the wilderness into heaven, the promised land. God provided this through Jesus, who, by the way, was probably born on that day in October. You know, by the way, I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade or ruin anybody's Christmas, but Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. Sorry. Merry Christmas. The Feast of Tabernacles, or again, the Feast of Booths or Tents, if you will, was commemorated by staying in little thatched houses made out of mainly palm branches. And it was in the month of October, and during this time, it was celebrated. And you can actually, this day, when you go to Israel, you can see these next to high-rise apartment buildings in Israel. They still celebrate this. So the Jews camp in them to remember God's miraculous provision for their forefathers who slept under the stars in the desert for 40 years before bringing them into the promised land. Uh, Just as the Israelites were brought into the promised land after 40 years, so too was Noah, a picture of Israel, the Jews, brought into a new earth, a promised land of sorts, after 40 days and 40 nights of rain. By the way, 40 in the scriptures is the number of judgment. So, you have Enoch before the flood. Enoch was pre-flood, just like the church is pre-tribulation. Enoch, what happened to Enoch? Oh, he walked with God and then was no more. Why? Because God took him. How did God take him? God raptured him before the flood. What? Yeah, Enoch is a picture of the church. And Noah and his family, a picture of the Jews. He gets them through the flood, as he will get Israel through the tribulation. But prior to the flood, Enoch was raptured, taken, and Enoch, I submit to you, is a picture of the rapture of the church, just as is Noah, a picture of Israel going through the tribulation. Let's bring this in for a landing before we get into our study of the book of Acts this way. You have on the screen a list of all seven feasts, and I want to show you something here that you can connect the dots with Revelation to Leviticus 23. Here's how it goes. You're going to get a crash course in the book of Revelation. Oh, but I thought the book of Revelation was a hard book to understand. Who told you that? I submit to you the devil told you that. Well, why do you say that, Pastor? Because it's the only book in all 66 books of the Bible that promises a blessing to those who read it, hear it, and take it to heart. You know what the book Revelation means? It's the Greek word apokalypsos. It's where we get our word apocalypse. Well, that's why I don't want to read the book of Revelation. (laughs) Because it's so apocalyptic. Yeah, but you know what apokalypsos in Greek means? Unveiling. Revealing. Now, stay with me. Revealing. Revelation? Do you, can you, do you see a pattern here? <laughs> it's a revealing book. It's an unveiling book. It reveals and unveilings that which will take place hereafter. And it's also one of the only books that has a divine outline placed within 